G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I thought I would try and sneak in a really quick and easy little video for you all. And I have created, now I was making this for my daughter. So while I was putting it all together, I thought maybe you guys might like it too. So I've turned it into a free pattern for you. And it is a beautiful little uh, paw print, doggy paw print pillow cushion cover. Um, and it's great for gifts so it's it's going to be coming really handy you can make it up in so many different ways I'll give you a whole heap of ideas and you can run with it so all you need to do is click on that link in the description below there's a little grey arrow there and that will open up the description box you'll find your free pattern templates the link to those in there make sure when you go to print them out you set your printer to print at actual size in the settings and that will make sure that your templates come out exactly right you'll find your measurements for your pattern pieces in there too and uh, I include all of the seam allowances in my patterns always makes it easier for you so let's get busy so let me show you the pieces that you're going to need to make up our little cushion cover now I'm going to start with my front center panel your measurements are on your pattern templates you'll find them there and that front center panel I'm actually using a, a blended wool here today which is unusual for me um, and it is very dense and very thick so I'm not interfacing mine um, if you're using a normal quilting cotton I would interface this front panel it just means that your appliques will be more stable and it does extend the life of your cushion so we've got our front panel cut and we also need our two back panels we're making a simple envelope back so you have all of your measurements there I've given them to you in inches and in centimeters and then of course you're going to need your little applique pour pieces and these all have uh, heat and bond or fusible webbing applied to the back so that we can iron those on now I've gone ahead and I'm using, because I'm making this for my daughter, I want it to be a very obvious little, very dog little cushion. So I'm using a little dog print. Um, there's so many variations on these prints. I've actually got mine from eBay. Just pay attention to the size of the little dogs in your print so that you know it's going to work with your project. Um, and I have gone ahead and of course isolated a few different little heads there to make up the little pores so the overall effect um, is quite um, it's quite impressive having all those little faces there now there's so many variations that you can do with this pattern so let's have a think perhaps you could do all different denims would work beautifully because obviously you don't have to use dogs um, you could use a perhaps you could use if you're going for a home decor if you want to um, have a little dog sort of um, feel about the cushion but maybe not really as obvious as this you could choose a, a base color like your soft pink there for example with this one I would go for a soft pink for the backing of the of the cushion front and then cut out your little paw pad pieces from your big flower bursts there which would give you a lovely dog lovers cushion without um, uh, being too loud and it would go in with home decor so that that would work for sure um, if you like your bright colors then you've you've got a friend in me um, you could go for a paint spot sort of a look where you could go for a, a neutral color on the back and some really clear clean brights that looks like a little paw pad dipped in paint that would be very very sweet or perhaps you've got a little dog who's passed and you maybe you kept an old blanket or something and you can make you could cut some of those little paw pad pieces from that old blanket and really make a lovely keepsake memory um, for somebody or for yourself so you can see there's lots of options there I'm going for the very obvious today so we've got our pattern pieces, we've got our little, uh, little paw pads cut out and I'm going to be sewing my little paw pieces on using my pearl thread as my embroidery thread. I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch. Um, I like the way the blanket applique stitch really 
makes these little pieces stand out on this cushion but if you want to make this cushion very very quickly um, you could go ahead and sew a zigzag or a satin stitch on the machine all around because the pieces are definitely big enough to handle that um, or perhaps you, you could just sew a straight stitch around them and it's entirely up to you I will be hand sewing them on um, and so our first step today is to pop on our pieces so we remove our backing paper on all of our little pore pieces there and we're going to be positioning them on and pressing them on with a hot iron and a protective cloth now what's very important is that the very center of this lower central pore pad piece right there in the center of that little divot there we need that to be 14 centimeters from your baseline of your fabric we need it to be 14 centimeters or five and a half inches and we also need that to be centered so you want to make sure that your measurements are the same either side and we get that one pressed into place first up I like to press that one into place first and then you can arrange your other little pieces around it now it's important to stay with that measurement the rest you will uh, be fine to add on but this measurement is important because it makes it sit nice and centrally on your little cushion front so as far as these little pieces go once you've got that one pressed on you want to leave a little bit of space between each one and you want to tilt out I've tried to give these shapes a, a more of a realistic pull pad look not just uh, simple ovals so you'll see they've got some shape to them and we want to just turn that little side one out a little and then there's two top ones they've got a straighter edge and those are the edges that we pull in together and we just tip those little toes to sit in together like that as they do actually on a dog you're getting an overhead view there so I may not be placing this exactly right but I will take my time to get them all placed right and so that everything is nice and even and once you're happy with that it should only be a small space between each of them you can press all of those on using your hot iron and protective cloth now once you've got you all your little pull pad pieces in place now we just have to sew around the edge of each of them in your preferred method now I've got my pearl thread here and I will be sewing a blanket applique stitch I've got a video that shows you how to sew this stitch I'm going to put the link up there for you if you want a closer look at that but I have just got a single thread and I've just come in from behind I've got a knot at the end of my thread so that's held that there and I've come out right on the edge of my little pull pad piece there and it's a very simple stitch to do I'm going to keep my stitches quite small and they will be around about around about three millimeters and I'm just going through both the fabrics and I'm coming out right on that edge make sure you're always taking up some of that bottom fabric and coming through that loop with my needle each time and pulling that little stitch into place traveling just a little way along keeping my stitches always all the same and coming through that loop again and that will give us that lovely little binding stitch many of you may have seen me do this stitch many times over and it is a stitch where practice makes perfect so you can see there that I'm going to get a lovely little edging stitch that's going to follow all the way around that little piece and it's really going to make that little piece not only never fray but it will always it, uh, it will really make that little piece stand out but you may want to go ahead with your machine satin stitch or a very close zigzag stitch or perhaps you just want to sew a straight stitch around and it depends on what you're using in your fabrics because you can make this a cushion up in a very rustic style where you can have um, some really you know quite obvious raw edges and it's a little bit 
it's a little bit frayed and so on and that can be a great look also so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew this same stitch in the same color all the way around every one of my little shapes and there we go you can see how nicely that little blanket applique stitch outlines all those shapes there so that's our front all ready to go now we just need to prepare our back pieces and first thing we do is on one of the long sides of each of our back envelope pieces we're just going to turn under you can see there that I have turned under and made a little hem so it's only about I guess what you would call a quarter of an inch that I first press under I'd call it a centimeter and then we press that one over again and that will cover our raw edge and we can just sew a seam right the way along and it's a nice little top stitch and it's a nice little finish to our envelope back so I'm just going to go ahead and do my second piece now and that has my second little hem sewn and all we need to do now is put our front and back pieces together so I've got my little clips that I'm going to be using and it's right sides together so we take one of our little back sections and we're just going to match up those top corners and we will clip those into place or pin and then we're going to do the same thing and overlap still with right sides together and match up those bottom corners there and that gives us a nice little overlap here for our little opening and it's just a matter of making sure all those corners are matched up and clipping all the way around and of course we have an opening in our envelope opening so we don't need to leave any openings in our sewing and then we're just going to sew and you can sew a quarter inch if you like I will take my seam allowance up to about six millimeters which is about a quarter of an inch and we're just going to sew around the entire outside of our little cushion cover make sure that you really back and forth on where your little flaps start and finish and on the underside too so make sure you feel where that is and you really back and forth there to make those little sections strong so that when we tuck in our little pillow insert um, that won't pull away now once I've done that once I've sewn that seam I will probably just trim my corners off my little points off and then I will sew with a zigzag stitch right the way around just to stop those edges fraying if you have a serger or an overlocker you could go ahead and overlock those edges also and there we have our little cushion cover all stitched up and zigzagged on my edges so we're just going to pull that one through I will take my knitting needle and I will push all those little points out and I'm going to take that one to the iron and give it a good press and then I will pop in my pillow insert and so there we go we have our finished little cushion cover and you can see just how effective that is and it looks like you've put a whole lot more work into it than really you have it's just a great little design and uh, fantastic for craft markets so feel free to go ahead and make them for craft markets and, and sell them online I think they're a great little project and really if you need to make them quickly remember that little machine zigzag or satin stitch all around the outside and you will be able to whip these up in no time so I hope you had fun well thank you all for joining me today it was a really quick and easy project wasn't it and uh, you're going to find that really useful in your gift giving so uh, I hope you've enjoyed it if you have you could give me a thumbs up that would be absolutely beaut now I'm very busy at the moment designing so we've got some new animals coming up as I promised 
you can follow me on Instagram if you like and uh, check out all the behind the scenes work and send me photos. Thank you so much. Keep the pictures coming. Oh, please, I want to be bombarded with these pictures of these cushions. I want to see all of the colours. Um, I'm sure you're going to have fun with it. So make sure that uh, you subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate all the support, everybody. But right now, I've got to get back to the drawing board. So make sure, everybody, something good comes to you in your day. Make sure that you share it and make sure that you pay it forward. Till next time, it's Hiru from me.